Well, can you please explain to us um, what you mean by cosmic resonance? Sure. So cosmic resonance is a phrase that I use to describe this remarkably fortunate situation we find ourselves in when it comes to the enterprise of the natural sciences. It turns out that we live in a world that time and time again shows itself to be mathematical at a very fundamental level. And in addition to that, here we are, creatures with higher faculties, the very higher faculties that are required for recognizing the eternal immaterial truths of mathematics and then turning around and applying those appropriately to the physical world. So without this three-way resonance between the material stuff of the cosmos, the eternal truths of mathematics, and the human mind, the sciences would have been virtually impossible. And it's not just that we wouldn't know much beyond maybe surface level about nature based on just plain out naked eye observation. All of the technology that we enjoy today would have never come about if we weren't able to harness mathematics and use it as a scientific tool. So that's what I mean when I talk about cosmic resonance, this matter, mind, mathematics situation that we find ourselves in. So is this idea of cosmic resonance, is that something that's a recent development in philosophical apologetics? Well, the answer to that is a bit complex. The short answer is no, it isn't really a recent development in Western thought, maybe a little bit more recent in the formal discipline of Christian apologetics. So if we go way back to the beginning of Western thought, we see strong traces of an awareness of what I'm calling cosmic resonance, at least as far back as the ancient Greek philosophers. So especially the Pythagoreans and the Platonists. So these guys saw mathematical orderliness in nature, particularly when they would observe the regularities of stellar and planetary movement. Of course, they didn't have telescopes back then, but they did lots of naked eye observations and kept extensive records. And so they were cognizant of the fact that mankind alone has this capacity to recognize and document this orderliness in nature. So some of these philosophers believed that the rationality that's manifest in nature and then our ability to explore that rationality is due to the existence of a rational source of all things, including the human mind. So they would say things like, well, mankind has a spark of the divine within himself, and that's what makes insight into nature possible. So we're looking at millennia ago that these kinds of thoughts were being um, taught and put down on paper. So eventually the cosmic resonance idea was integrated into Jewish and Christian thought because theologians recognized, wow, there's an essential truth that this Greek philosophy supports, this idea of a rational creator of all things but in whose image were actually made. And then you can fast forward from um, the early church to the scientific revolution in the 16th and 17th centuries. And there we have great men like Galileo and Kepler, and they talked about the universe being written in the language of mathematics. And then Kepler and Robert Boyle saying things like, the man who studies the natural world is actually acting as a priest in God's cosmic temple, learning to see something of the mind of God in the creation. So they all believed that we're able to do mathematical scientific work and discern the mathematical laws of nature precisely because we're made in God's image. And then we come to our day, present day, um, apologetics, and we have theologians, mathematicians, and physicists all recognizing this phenomenon um, that I'm calling cosmic resonance. So at Oxford, we have scientist and theologian Alistair McGrath, mathematician John Lennox, who've both written about it in one way or another, and then physicist and Anglican priest John Polkinghorne, he's had a lot to say about the way the human mind fits with the mathematical universe, kind of like a hand-in-glove fit. 
But I'd really like to see this idea of cosmic resonance get much more exposure in contemporary Christian apologetics, because I think it makes for a powerful case for a creator and for our special relationship to that creator. Now, you were just saying a few minutes ago that this idea is going all the way back to the ancient Greeks. So did they see this resonance specifically as pointing to the existence uh, of God? Well, when it comes to the ancient Greeks, it totally depends on what you mean by God and which ancient Greek you're talking about. But in general, they most definitely saw the resonance as being indicative of a rationality that transcends humanity in some respect, but not all of them thought that this uh, transcendent rationality was some personal entity who was involved in the affairs of mankind. Some of them had more of a pantheistic or a panentheistic view, but essentially they're philosophizing on their observations of the natural world and on man's mental capabilities led them to a really important conclusion, even though it wasn't a complete conclusion. And it, this conclusion was that the world's inherently rational and that human beings have minds that are fit to appreciate this rationality. And I think this is an excellent example of what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he said that no one has an excuse for not being aware of the very existence of God because we see God through the things that he has made. Well, I know that there's skeptics out there, like intellectual skeptics that often claim that the rise of you know modern science and so forth and progress in the sciences has lessened the probability of God's existence. And not just like intellectual scholars, but a lot of times I'll even see that on social media as people are discussing things or if you're trying to discuss spiritual things, they say, well, I don't believe it. You know, and the tagline is because science, you know, so because science is out there and all the things that we know, the, I, the idea that God exists is even lower than before. So how would you respond to that claim? I'd say that precisely the opposite is true. When the giants of the scientific revolution saw the mind of God in the mathematical laws of nature that they were discovering, they never would have dreamed that 20th and 21st century physics and cosmology would reinforce that notion to such an astounding degree. So now, based upon our best scientific knowledge, our universe is more explicable in the language of mathematics than it ever has been before. And besides that, philosophical arguments such as the argument from reason and the arguments for the existence of a soul have come about and added a really important dimension to the discussion. Because now it's not only do we have to explain the, the fundamentally mathematical universe, we also have to explain how it is that blind cosmic processes could lead to human rationality that's fit to grasp these concepts and do the amazing work that we've done in science. So I would say that the tables can be completely turned on that materialist because science argument, because my claim would be science could never even come to exist if it were not for a rational creator in whose image we're made. But wouldn't those people also argue that if we say that there are great scientists who are also Christians, it was because they were Christians, they saw positive theistic implications in scientific discoveries. And that is not true of scientists who aren't Christians. Well, they would be wrong on that count as well. There have been great men of science just over the past century who certainly saw positive theistic implications in scientific discoveries. One example would be Robert Jastrow. He was um, a staunch agnostic, um, and he founded the Goddard Space Institute over at NASA. But in his TV interviews, he was a very prolific TV interviewee. Um, and in his writings, he would often remark that the standard model of cosmology, Big Bang Theory, strongly suggested a creator. He talked about divine implications of the science. He just wasn't willing to abandon his worldview. And then earlier in the 20th century, we have Albert Einstein, 
And he made several telling statements about seeing divine rationality in the fundamental structure of nature. He actually said uh, it's a miracle. He used the word miracle um, that the universe is even comprehensible. In other words, the fact that the world is mathematically ordered and we human beings can decipher that order um, goes far, far beyond what we could reasonably expect if everything's just the result of blind, undirected processes. Einstein said what we should expect is a chaotic universe that we can't even make heads or tails of. Um, and so it's absolutely false that only Christian scientists or scientists who are Christians, to get the terminology correct, um, saw theistic implications in their discoveries. Um, there have even been agnostics um, and atheists who have been willing to say, yeah, this certainly looks as if it points towards a higher power.